Hey everybody, Ben Starr here, and we are doing DIY stuff this weekend. Uh, I have been renovating my backyard now for about, oh gosh, two years. <laughs> it's not going very quickly. But one of the biggest projects is this giant pergola that I'm building. And of course, I can't be like normal people and just use normal 4x4 four four and 2x4 two and 2x6 two to build my pergola. I have to build it out of giant hewn wood. And so I'm using these reclaimed railroad ties that came from a railroad out in Arizona. And I have taped off this uh, template on my garage floor so that each one of these successive arches that I build is going to be the same exact size as the next one. I've got three arches in total to build. And uh, what I'm doing right now is just drilling holes for these gigantic bolts that hold it all together. And so I started off with my hole saw to make insets uh, because these bolts aren't quite long enough to do the job. So I'm insetting them just a little bit and then once we're done we're going to move it into the backyard and lift it up. So I've got this ridiculously long spade bit uh, that I had to special order in order to get down through these railroad ties. And most of these railroad ties are solid oak and then they've been soaked in creosote and they are hard as nails. So it's not really easy to get through these. Um, but I have taped off uh, my proper depth on the spade bit so I know when I'm hitting the bottom and I'm not trying to drill into the concrete. Uh, but definitely not an easy thing getting this thing drilled out. So we've reassembled the arch out here and I'm bolting them together super tight because we get tornado force winds in Texas uh, every spring so this pergola has got to be super sturdy. Alright so it's time to lift the arch and we have rented this beautiful piece of equipment it's called a roustabout or a pipe lifter and normally it's used like in warehouses and in oil fill uh, scenarios to lift giant bundles of heavy pipe um, but if you can find a rental place that has them they're actually kind of hard to find uh, they are a wonderful wonderful tool to do heavy lifting in confined spaces for the homeowner so here we go now as you start to get tension on your knot i've made this out of webbing uh, you have to watch the knot really carefully, just make sure it's not going to slip and then it tightens up properly. This is an incredibly dangerous thing to do, lifting a, an arch this heavy. This is about probably 800 pounds. And uh, we're on uneven ground, so you have to watch really carefully as you go. I just have to make sure that the load does not end up too far out in front of the roustabout. That will take it off at center of gravity and your roustabout might turn over and everything will come crashing down and kill you. You don't want that to happen. So uh, keep your eye on that load. Make sure it's coming straight down towards the ground from the top of the roustabout. Now the arch is standing upright being supported by the roustabout and it's time to anchor it to our concrete footings. I poured these footings like almost a year ago and they've got some reinforced rebar coming up out of them. So I'm tying this additional rebar uh, with wire to the wire coming out of the footings and that is going to give strength to uh, the, the concrete that we're pouring around uh, the base of each foot. And you'll also see we've got saran wrap around our wood. Concrete tends to hold a lot of moisture, and if you've got wood that's sitting in moisture constantly for a long time, what does it do? It rots. So actually, this protects the wood from coming into direct moisture contact uh, with that highly alkaline concrete, and it will prevent deterioration of the wood. If you will do this on fence posts, if you set fence posts in concrete, they will last much longer without rotting as well. So uh, as soon as I get done with this, it'll be time to put our forms around and start pouring concrete.
All right, so now it's time to mix concrete. I'm almost out of my fast setting concrete, which is what I like to use when setting something this large that needs to set quickly, uh, but I'm running out of light, so I don't have time to go and get more. So I'm gonna use traditional uh, high strength concrete, and I'm using this concrete mixer. This is worth every single penny I paid for it used on Craigslist, and I plan on selling it after I'm done. So uh, get yourself a concrete mixer. It saves so much time. Okay, so now we lift our concrete. The 80 pound bags are really hard to work with. Now, concrete dust, so fine and alkaline, can cause silicosis of the lungs if you inhale it. So don't be stupid like me and wear your respirator while you're mixing concrete. Because you don't want to die of lung cancer when you get older. Getting the right amount of water in your concrete is critical. If you get it too wet and sloppy when it cures, it's not going to be strong enough. We also have another weapon on our side today, and that is fiberglass additives. These little fibers, when you add them to your concrete, distribute throughout and they get locked into the concrete when it hardens and it increases the uh, strength of the concrete significantly. And they're really cheap. It's like six bucks for a bag that'll pour almost a cubic yard of concrete. So, use these. It's great. And now it's just a matter of transferring your concrete into our cardboard forms here. And when you're working with concrete, air bubbles are one of your worst enemies. So after you've got, you know, six inches of concrete laid, you go in there with a shovel and jiggle it around to make sure that it all settles down and that your air bubbles are gone. So after your form is full, you need to mound up the top for drainage purposes. That way when water falls, it doesn't just sit here on the concrete and rot out the wood. So you need to form a slope, uh, a nice smooth slope uh, to your concrete to make sure the water runs up properly. Now, concrete is actually very alkaline uh, and somewhat caustic, and you really don't want to have it in contact with your skin, uh, or at least minimize the contact with the skin. Um, if you really care about your hands, you should use like rubber gloves, latex gloves, something like that when you're actually handling the concrete. Uh, I've been doing this so long though that my hands are already ruined, so I don't really care. Uh, but it's best to use gloves when you're in direct contact with wet concrete. All right, so now we just let the concrete set for a few hours and we got two of our arches up. Only one more arch we gotta build, the final arch, which goes down there behind the chimney. And then it's time to work on the connector bars and stuff for the pergola. So it's looking really good. Not bad for a day's work. <laughs>